Yeah, I think leading by example. I mean, you know, be a positive influence instead of a negative influence. Like, instead of complaining and pointing fingers and saying these people are responsible for sexism or, you know, whatever isms that are in our geek society, uh, just actually support people that want to learn. And again, yeah, be, I always use this reference, but kind of, you know, channel your inner Yoda or Time Lord or whatever you uh, subscribe to as the oldest being um, and kind of be a mentor to these people. Don't gasp loudly when someone says they've never seen Doctor Who. That's like, don't geek shame, okay? That's, that's a big deal, don't geek shame. If someone's never seen something, don't instantly go on Twitter and write their name and go, so-and-so's never seen Doctor Who or Star Wars or Star Trek or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or they don't even know who Tom Baker is, don't do that. Because everyone wants to seem like they're the smartest geek in the room, and let's just all pretend we all are, and not try to outsmart and outgeek everyone. It's not a giant game show. Life is more than that. So think of life as an Xavier school, as opposed to Jeopardy, where you're trying to show off all the time. And so, like, you know, someone says they've never seen Doctor Who, will go, well, here's how I learned about Doctor Who. You can start with, you know, this doctor, or you can go all the way back to black and white, or, you know, really freak them out and show them the Christopher Lee one that no one's supposed to talk about. <laughs> or, you know, I always do that with Star Wars people. If I actually find the one person who's never seen Star Wars, I'm like, we should start with the holiday special. <laughs> There's so many cringes in the audience just then. <laughs> Well, you, can, you can't go anywhere but up for a long time. And maybe the indoor series, and then you get into the movies. But, you know, it's like, you know, think of it as your, it's your chance to really make a difference in some, some geek's life. It's like, teach them, you know, if they want to, they've never read William Gibson, start them on, you know, your favorite William Gibson book and say why you like this. If they don't, you know, they know the difference between a replicate and a cyborg, teach them, you know, don't shame them. And I think that's something that we all need to learn because it's very easy to make fun of our friends and our siblings uh, when they want to learn stuff that suddenly they didn't care about all these years and now they care about. Um, you know, make it a friendly space for them to learn about it instead of shaming them into having to Google it by themselves and then learning the wrong way. Think of it like sex. You don't want your friends to learn it the wrong way. So, you know, you're the joy of geek. And so you're going to teach them the right positioning for learning about Doctor Who and Star Wars and Star Trek and all that. You're, you're going to be helpful in this, and you don't want anyone to have bad geek. So. There's a certain level of geek hipsterdom, which is just so wrong in this community, where people do. They, they find out that you know someone identifies as a geek but hasn't seen this or read this or whatever, and people flip out, and they're like, oh, you're not a geek if you haven't seen that. But there's so many things. How could you possibly have seen everything? And I think inherently what makes us geeks is our excitement for things and how much we love these shows and books and, and people. And finding someone who hasn't seen a show that you like, our, we need to change our mindset. And instead of being appalled that they haven't already seen that, we need to see that as an opportunity to get to share that excitement with someone new and get to see that first time that that person experiences something in a way that you know we haven't been able to have again because we've already watched it, we've already read it. And I think that that's something that if we if we can all change our mindset about that a little bit, because I think we're all guilty of that. I think we all have been shocked that someone hasn't seen you know Harry Potter or read you know read the books first or something like that. Um, and if, if we can look at that as a really great opportunity to share our loves of things with people rather than, you know, making them feel bad for not doing it already, I think that that can definitely help. And also, you might learn something. I love finding yeah. geek virgins because I love watching Star Wars with someone who's never seen Star Wars before because they'll find stuff where you're like, oh, I never really thought of that. And, like, I remember watching – one of my friends said he watched it with one of his uh, friends who had never seen it. And when – this is spoiler if anyone's not seen New Hope – uh, when Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen die and, you know, Luke comes back and sees all their ashes, his friend was like, they were cyborgs? <laughs> and my friend was like, uh, wait, what? And it's like, well, it, of course they weren't, but, you know, like his, his mindset, he likes robot movies, and so he was just looking for robot stuff all the way through. <laughs> so, I mean, and it's fun to watch, like, you know, I remember watching Doctor Who, I made my dad watch an episode of Doctor Who once, and all he, and my stepmom was watching with me, and she'd never seen it either. And all my stepmom could think of about the TARDIS was, who cleans all those rooms? <laughs> and through her mind, that was a 
dusting nightmare was the Charmus. And I never thought of all the chores that would, because you know, one house is big, but a TARDIS, imagine the dust pile up in that place. So, you know, it's fun to watch your favorite stuff with people who have never seen it before, because you might learn something and get a new perspective and see it in a different light. Well, the swimming pool does move around at times, yeah. so I think, like, yeah. Well, She's no, sexy. I mean, like, she has to keep herself pool, sexy. If the pool just, like, moves into a different room, oh. then, like, it washes itself. I guess we kind of got off the top. I wanted to bring up this, because we're talking about geekdom and feminism, uh, and not necessarily feminism, but feminine. And uh, Mac Makeup came out with the Wonder Woman uh, line. So I still have my lipstick. I guess it came out a couple years ago. I'm it's actually wearing it years still. Ago. And they had eyeliner stuff. And I remember there was a big uh, divide amongst uh, women uh, who called themselves geeks, whether they called themselves geek girls or just geeks, because they were like, oh, they're, you know, they're pandering to us, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Like, I'll buy anything that's pandering. I'm pandering. I don't care. Pander to me. I'll buy it. Like, I just want more geek stuff. I didn't think of it as an anti feminist stuff, but there were, I don't remember, did you, I don't remember what you thought about that. But I think it's awesome. Okay, thanks. See, I, I don't care. I think it's really silly when people get mad about like comics that are geared towards women because I'm super girly. I love dresses and makeup and all that stuff. And if they're wearing like pretty ball gowns and still kicking butt, I'm so into that. So I don't care if they're like, oh, they're dumbing it down for us. Like, whatever. Some girls like that. Like, stop. Typecasting, <laughs> so annoying. Yeah, you can have a light lightsaber in a tattoo. Oh, and, it and just matter. like on that topic, like way back to what she was talking about, like five minutes ago, like stop blaming. Um, stop saying that. Like, stop blaming things like the Big Bang Theory or like the way that women are dressed in comics. Instead of just like making excuses for problems that you see in comics or in the geek world, why don't you just accept it for how it is and learn to deal with it? Exactly. <laughs> like, you know what? People get mad at me because I do a lot of cosplaying and I've been very sexually harassed in some of my more revealing cosplay and people basically do the, well, you were asking for it. Like, if you were wearing that, you should have understood that people were going to take pictures of your butt and like made, make lewd comments and maybe you should cosplay a more modest character. And it's like, well, I can't help that the artists draw the characters that way, nor do I really care because if we can own that, and if we can be like, yeah, you know what? I do feel comfortable enough with my body to wear a thong leotard, then, then that's our prerogative and that's more power to us. Yeah. There should be no shame in wanting to feel hot. Seriously, none, especially in this world. And it's so horrible because I'm sure all of us have been accused of this at one point. Every, every beautiful person here, you're all beautiful, by the way, but I'm sure that every person here said, oh, well, you're wearing makeup, you're not a geek. You only care about the way that you look, you're not a geek. That's so silly. I've been I've been accused of of wanting just a boyfriend, and that's why I hang out because I have low self esteem. So I come to cons to pick up boys because I'm too pretty to be a geek. And that sounds like tuning my own horn, but I legitimately have those words said to me. I what? Don't know. I feel like if you look at the comics, Superman he has some makeup on. I mean, you can't. Those lips are red. I mean, maybe it's alien DNA. I don't I don't really know. I mean, I. I've, I've always talked about with the cosplay thing, I'm equal opportunity, like I just wish there was more guys wearing thongs as cosplay. Like I just, I just wish if, if, if comic book artists, or if, if comic book artists, okay now, do, no, no, you're, you're, treading on, you're treading on dangerous territory because any girl can wear what she wants and any guy can wear what he wants. It's true, and there are different people that different people want to see in different types of so I want to see the type of I worked at Lucasfilm for almost a decade as a senior editor there, and I did all the community stuff and the blog, and I go to conventions for a decade, more so. I mean, I've been going to Comic-Con since the early 90s, and uh, I've seen my share of man Leia's. You know, I've seen my share of guys dressing up as Princess Leia. It makes me feel icky. It, it can be gross, but it can be empowering. You know, I don't care. Like, there's, it's, I like cross-dressing. I like that there's Lady Deadpools. I like that there's women dressed as Ewoks. I like I, that there's guys that dress however they want. I don't care. To me, it's like if you like a character, whatever. Personally, if I was going to cosplay, I cosplay as the Chrysler building. But that's just me. <laughs> I think there's not a building cosplay out there. Like, I love TARDISes, but where is my Empire State? But where's the Space Needle cosplay? Where's, 
you know, where's Abraham Lincoln's log cabin cosplay? I would be all over that. So to me, it's, I get that, you know, you want to empower yourself and look sexy, and I think that's totally awesome too, but if you're truly a sexual character, you can make the Chrysler building look hot. So... Uh, that's a challenge out there. Too. Yeah, I think, you know, Fortress of Solitude costume is what I've been working on for a while. It's all foam, but, you know, it looks pretty, and there's like a little Superman bed. But, I mean, I think it looks awesome. But again, it, it all depends on what you're into, and I think, especially with this panel, the big lesson is don't, don't be so judgy, you know, and learn to accept other people's interests. And if people are being judgy to you, don't immediately try to force choke them, you know, kind of like just either block them, ignore them, or try to figure out why they're so stupid, and then you know, <laughs> like, they might not even realize that they're being rude. Yeah, I mean, it's... Be because they sit around with all of their friends being like, oh, we know way more than those And others. it's not just guys. I mean, girls are very, very mean to other girls. So, I mean, there's... And I see that more than the guys doing lewd comments. I see girls, like, glaring at other girls for daring to show skin or something. And one of my friends is Adrian Curry. And she is, you know, she's a winner of America's Next Top Model, the first one. I mean, she's gorgeous. If, you know, if I look like Adrian Curry, I'd probably be naked on this panel right now. <laughs> the point being, she loves to do cosplay, and she loves to dress up as, like, Eon Flux and Princess Leia and everything. I mean, she's done every kind of cosplay you can imagine. And I've seen girls glare at her, and I'm like, you don't even know her! And she, like, can kick your ass at, you know, any video game you choose. I mean, she's a thorough geek. I mean, she knows her geekdom. But the problem is, is you get these perceptions that, you know, gorgeous people aren't allowed to be true geeks. Celebrities aren't allowed to be yeah, real that's, geeks. That's um, you know, every, ge every geek has in their mind what they think the perfect geek is. And it's just not true. I mean, geek is a way of life. It's not a type. And quite honestly, the, the term geek actually derived from circus people, carnival people that would bite the heads off of live chickens. So, unless you guys all want to prove that Let's one. see it. <laughs> you brought chickens. You are true that none of us are geeks, so it's all just kind of a state of mind, not necessarily a prototype of a, a doll, and this is what you're supposed to look like. I feel like the, the main reason that most people do identify as geeks is because we didn't feel like we fit into what the rest of society thought was right and perfect. So if, if we're getting that same flack like on the other side, then where, where can we fit in? And yeah. that's, that's just not okay. And that's with any subgroup. I mean, punkers are like that, goths are like that. I mean, any type of group where it was all the outsiders, that couldn't get into the other groups and they bonded together and now the outsider group's the cool group. Yeah. It's, it's just like that with any kind of thing. It's just geekdom's taken over because geeks are now writers in writer's rooms and they're directors and they're in ad agencies and we're now getting marketed to right and left and we have shows just about us and movies just about us and reality shows about us. And so now it's just become mainstream. And f oddly enough, a lot of things we love started as mainstream. Star Wars isn't an indie film, you guys. It's a mainstream. <laughs> you know? Same thing with Star Trek. That was never like a you know underground thing. These are all hit franchises. Doctor Who. There's you know all of Europe. So I mean, <laughs> so it's not like this is a small thing that we like kept in this little box and we didn't want to share. I mean, it's always been there. It's just now it's so prevalent that people are like, hey, wait a minute, that's my sandbox, get out. And I'm like, sandbox was the whole world, you just didn't know it. And so it's just a, I don't know. I feel like we're being very, we're, are we being feminine still? I can't tell. <laughs> um, actually, well, we can move on a little bit and chat um, a little bit more on different places online or, or cool people out there that um, some geeky women or people who love geeky women can kind of check out if they want to see some great examples of, of female geeks out there or um, just other places online to kind of get to be geeky and feminine. Um, I actually do a feature on my blog. I haven't been keeping up on it lately because I'm lazy. But uh, I do it, it's called the Geeky Fashionista. I try to do it once a week and I interview women who have positions of power within geeky industries, writers of comic books. Um, people who work at Marvel, like people who work on TV shows, etc. And I interview them. Uh, people like Bria Grant, she is a good friend of mine, and she's an actress in Heroes, also a huge geek, wrote a comic book, um, like just made a nerdy movie, road trip movie. She's really awesome. Um, but I interview people like that, and we talk about being a geek, but also being feminine, and I ask them very girly questions, like, where do you like to buy your clothes? And uh, it's very well received, so if you ever want to check out my blogs, shameless self-plug, that's on there. Um, one of my favorite uh, is a company called Her Universe. Oh yeah, Her Universe. Um, Ashley Eckstein, who's the actress, does the voice of Ahsoka Tano. 
on uh, the Clone Wars, which I hope some of you are watching and big Star Wars fan. And if you're not, it's not necessarily a kid's show. It's actually kind of deep and violent, which is awesome. Um, anyway, uh, Her Universe uh, is a clothing company for women who are tired of buying uh, small or medium-sized guy shirts and then trying to make it look like girl shirts. Um, I don't, this may come a shock to some of you, but we have boobs. And, um, not all of them are the same size, and a lot of times we have hips. We have things that guys' shirts aren't going to accommodate. And uh, a lot of us are tired of having to re-sew them and redo them to make them look the way we want. And also we wanted uh, more, there's some girly designs, and then there's some just straight up cool designs that aren't necessarily girly girly. And I'm not saying guys can't wear her universe. There's plenty of her universe stuff that guys can wear too. My favorite shirt is the I'm crushing on Wesley Crusher shirt. Uh, <laughs> which everyone should buy. Uh, but she's got stuff that's Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, Warehouse 13, sci-fi originals. Uh, like all those crazy monster movies that sci-fi does. There's shirts, girly shirts for that. She does jewelry. So go to heruniverse.com. She's got a forum too where girls can like talk to each other and network and talk and just basically geek out in a like secure space. Um, and I really thought she was great. I mean, when I looked, worked at Lucasfilm, one thing I really tried to do is get more marketing dollars and attention towards women who weren't just moms. Because um, I think there's a lot of geek girls out there that are kind of being ignored by major franchises, which is silly because we have money, we'll buy stuff, so if you make it, we'll buy it. But that concept doesn't necessarily reach all the way to the boardroom where there's not a lot of girls. So that's something that I really wanted to try to stress and her universe definitely filled that, filled, filled that void. So if you like geeky stuff and you like wearing geek girl stuff, and also if you're a guy and you're like shopping and want to really impress a lady, I'm telling you that, I mean, a lot of us are shallow and we like jewelry they and have shirts. Their TARDIS yeah. dress. I'm so awesome. That's a way to a girl's heart is a TARDIS dress. I'm just saying that. That's like your first dating tip for the tonight. So, yeah. Um, and Her Universe actually just launched um, the Year of the Fangirl, which is a, a thing they're, they're starting. And you can submit um, yourself to or a friend um, that is just a really awesome, geeky woman. And every single day for a year, they will profile a different person on their blog. Um, it's really, really neat. So um, I think if you just go to their main website, heruniverse.com, they have info on that right now. Also, if you want just a kind of a more a geek girl perspective on the news and current events that are geek-based and entertainment news, the marysue.com is a great blog. Um, and they really look at those types of issues without being, you know, feminism in your face kind of thing, but definitely looks at things that we care about um, instead of just the typical entertainment reporting. So there's lots of great interviews on there, previews, comics, uh, gaming news, which is another huge, that's a whole other geekdom that we're not even talking about right now, but gamer girls, there are a lot of girls out there that play video games and I talk about a tattoo. Yeah, I mean, talk about a sexist industry that you have to deal with that. I mean, I won't even go to the conventions that are just gaming conventions because those are the worst when it comes to that. And you've they're, that. they're pretty bad. But Mary Sue covers gaming stuff as well, so definitely check out that blog if you're online. There's, there was this controversy that was going on on YouTube um, over the last week where there's this show called becoming YouTube or being YouTube or something. Um, but in the most recent episode, uh, the host made this comment about how there aren't any YouTube girls. He just like said, yeah, like where are all the YouTube girls? And so You're the, like, uh, there, there's been this, uh, so there was a few- You just think it like YouTube were like cute cats and guys getting racked? Just, <laughs> well, I think that he just, no, cause he partly, like, he interviews like YouTube bloggers and wow. things. He just like, he, because he hadn't personally sought out girls on YouTube, he just assumed they weren't there. So there's just been this big sort of uprising, and they've been trying to do it in a really positive way, but girls have been coming out of the woodwork, anywhere from you know 5,000 subscribers to 500,000 subscribers, to be like, right here, we're, we're right here. We're, we've been here the whole time, you just didn't know. So if you actually search Becoming YouTube on YouTube right now, there are so many so many videos about girls talking about this issue and talking about their channels and talking about how we are here and what we're doing. Um, and actually there's a, a new, um, it's a website called wonderly.com um, and I, I'm actually part of it. Um, but it's this thing that uh, the company Big Frame is doing and it's just a network of really strong um, positive female content creators. And if you go there, it's just, it's got all of their channels and it has all sorts of really great content and it's just showing girls not only creating and being awesome, but working together, which is I think something that 
you know, the female community online can do a lot with. Um, so I think both of those things together, we'll find a lot of really, really great women online. And even just like uh, um, websites that are primarily female, like Tumblr, if you look up tags for anything like Doctor Who or um, like big fandoms, there are huge, huge communities of people just reblogging each other and generating discussion. There's an entire generation of young fans, so if you're younger in the audience, there's a lot of teenage fans that um, are just getting into it for the first time and fully embracing it and not having to deal with the horrible bullying that I'm sure that we all had to deal with at the hands of people who thought it was weird to be geeky since it's cool now and it's really refreshing and I kind of like voyeuristically watching all of that. Seeing just this like, um, it's kind of like almost escapism for me. <laughs> I like to see it, I like to see it happen. But it's very cool if you just look up literally anything on Tumblr that's a geeky tag that's primarily women. And also, you know, Pinterest is 80% women, yeah. and Pinterest has a geek section. It's so awesome. if you go to Pinterest and click on geek, you'll see that. Um, Pinterest also is just, and they should just call it procrastination Trist, because that's all um, it really is, it's just, I just, just poor. Well, it's, it's good, well, yeah, but it's also good for like getting ideas. I mean, I'm a writer, so I use it for ideas and like, for crafting, and there's a lot of, there's a huge geek, gra geek crafting community on Pinterest as well as geek bakers. So people who want to make TARDIS wedding cakes or funeral cakes or whatever you use cakes for. Um, it's just a birthday. I don't know why I went straight to funeral. Uh, sorry, God. Um, so I mean, there's pretty much every version of social media, there's a geek element to it where you can find your geek community. So if you're into Pinterest, there's a geek community. If you're into Twitter, duh, that's like pretty much all geek community. And if you go to obviously Tumblr, um, Vine, if you're starting to make little Vine videos, there's, you know, independent filmmakers now making six second Vine versions of their favorite uh, geek movies and comics. I mean, there's so many different things out there. So right now, if you're a geek and they're like, I'm all alone, you're an idiot, because all you have to do is get online or look around or go outside and yell, I'm a geek, and someone down the block will go, I have too. So you can find people. Yeah, especially girls. I think now that we all know each other exists, we're going to stalk each other. So and stop I mean, being jealous of each other, though. Just stop that. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, the jealousy thing, unfortunately, girls do that a lot in general but I think with uh, the geek community we should definitely be more supportive of each other help each other with their blogs you know give each other ideas if you are in the industry whether it be gaming or comics or entertainment or whatever and there's people that want there are other girls that want to get into that industry and it may be kind of guy centric you know offer some tips or suggestions or advice I mean you can do that for free it takes five seconds and it, you may change somebody else's life. And I think same with guys. Like, I don't ever want to be exclusionary. You know, it's up to the guys to be cool to chicks, too. Like, you know, it's up to you to, like, go, hey, you're a geek, that's awesome, instead of going, eh, you're too sexy. You know, or, no, I've never heard a guy say that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who are these guys that are like, you're too sexy to be a geek. Get out. Like, I'm sorry, but that... Does that exist or is that yes. a myth? Yeah, oh, okay. it does happen. What the hell's wrong with you guys? Um, yeah, so anyway, I mean, I know this has kind of turned into a giant group hug or what, but uh, I do think, I can't stress enough that if, if you do know someone that's getting into geekdom, you have to like kind of be nice to them so they don't have a bad experience and then become serial killers and kill us all because we like My Little Pony. I don't know why I went there either. Sorry. You've been reading dark. my diary again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think supporting each other, so sorry. Uh, I think supporting each other too is a really, it, it's just, it just makes so much sense. And I think people hold back from doing it because they think, if, oh, if I promote that person's stuff, it's taking attention away from my stuff and that's bad. But that's not bad because if you, if you link to someone's video or to someone's Etsy account or whatever, you endorse that thing. And if people like it, they're going to remember that you told them that and that's still you getting your voice out there and it's going to help that person and in turn they might help you. So, a tastemaker. Seriously. I mean, that's what Artist, Artist Alley is like. I mean, Artist Alley downstairs, it's not like the Hunger Games, you guys. I mean, they all like, <laughs> they're all they all like each other. <laughs> it's not like, each other's faces and singing it's, songs. It's not like they glare at each other from their booths and like, they're like, I'm going to get money for my comic and not you. Like, they all, it's a supportive group. So if you're an artist and you want to have a table at Artist Alley here next year, or you're an artist or a writer and you want to write comics, talk to these people, especially the people are doing independent comics. I mean, you might not get the advice you want at DC or Marvel booths, but you can at these independent comics and these independent artists, 
and especially women. I mean, I, some of us worked on the Womanthology pro project last year and this year as well, which was uh, professional and amateur uh, comic book writers and artists who were women working together in an industry that's predominantly, you know, guy-centric, trying to encourage women to try to get into comics. And it was a really fun experience because we all kind of supported each other and got great advice and all did comics. But that's something that, you know, I think that we can all do if we want to get into a field, whether it's comics or making films or TV shows or YouTube or whatever, instead of leaving the stupid snarky comments, you know, on YouTube, ask a question that might get answered by the creator that's actually doing the stuff you like. Or, you know, talk to someone that you respect and say, how did you get into this industry? Like, really think about your future and how you can, like, get good advice instead of just going, I'm a big fan and then walk away hating yourself because you didn't ask something cool or, you know, just basically being snarky. Snarky's never going to get you anywhere. I'm sorry, unless you have a late night talk show, snarky's not going to help you. So, right now you should really be thinking about how can I help others and how can I, you know, get further in this as well by networking and having fun while doing it. That's why cons exist, is so we can all like go, hey, we all like the same stuff, and also go, hey, I want to do this. So instead of standing in a mic complaining that you don't like something in your favorite franchise, you can make your own franchise and then build your own ranch and then make your own movies and then piss off a whole other generation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is for. I'm sorry, I'm on a rant. I'm on a lot of cold medicine. Like, really. Well, speaking of um, not being snarky and also standing up in front of the mic, um, we will open up to questions. Um, and there is a mic right in front, so if anyone wants to um, head up there, they can. And um, also, if any of you guys have suggestions or tips of um, really cool geeky women out there that we should be checking out or cool geeky sites, um, feel free to tweet them with the hashtag geek and femme, um, G E E K A N D F E M, uh, or just introduce yourselves and you guys can all check out the hashtag and like help each other and find awesome, cool, supportive geeky women. <laughs> Hello. Um, so first off, a couple of things kind of throughout the panel. Going back to your thing about uh, male cosplayers, and this is a shameless self-plug, but Molly, I believe you and I were first introduced over my Dear Men of Geek Culture article, which discussed that, like, well, if we're going to have all the attractive women cosplayers, where are all the hot guys? Yeah, where's my um, tokens? Right. Uh, I want to go so I can bounce quarters off their abs, but um, I wanted to... And you guys don't have to be super, like, skinny. I'm cool with big old Vikings. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. My big thing for that article was push-ups. For yeah. some reason, I was really kilt, obsessed with them. Kilts can hide a lot. <laughs> that you did a photo shoot and you discussed gamer girls mm -hmm. and this idea that's been going around of women who are posing very sexily with the Xbox controllers that aren't plugged in, all of that. And I know that here in Seattle there's been a group that actually does cosplay pornography and I wanted to kind of get your opinions on this I guess commercialized geek girl that's not necessarily the supportive, you know, the let's all be girls, it's the no, geek girls are sex objects, and that commercialization of the porno, pornographizing these women. Is that a new word? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just for you. I mean, I think, I think that honestly it's okay because we're all sexual creatures, and I feel that separating Separating sexuality and geekism is kind of absurd because we're, we're adults, we like sex, and cosplay deviance I actually think is very, which I'm sure is what you're referring to, cosplay deviance is very um, interesting in that they do not use the hottest or hottest or best looking cosplayers, and I feel that they're actually quite empowering because they um, allow people who feel comfortable getting naked and feel good about themselves to dress up as their favorite characters and get naked, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As far as the like girls posing with things over their boobies and whatever, the gamer girl stuff that we kind of paradise while still being sexy, our point with that was not like, oh, haha, ha, well, some of these girls are geeks and some of them are, but we're real ones. The point of that was like, look, we are real gamers and we are sexualizing ourselves, so what? Like, we don't care. There's nothing wrong with that. People need to stop telling us to be sexually empowered because there's nothing wrong with being sexually empowered. If you feel good about yourself, feel good about yourself. And that's really all it comes down to. And my opinion on the fake yeah. geek girls things, that I don't really think there is that. I mean, like, GQ will do pictures of 
their models with controllers, and maybe those girls have never played video games, but maybe they'll get curious and go pick up a controller, so. Hey, I'm Rain. Hey! She's an awesome geek girl celebrity, everyone bow. I'm you from afar. this a lot being removed from the whole world except through internet for several months now which is which is awesome um, but uh, it really makes you think about the difference between interacting with people in real space and time here and the sexism you might experience at a con or in a real physical space talking to a real person which does of course happen but then the the insane amount of um, you could say sexism but a better word is even conflict that happens online when people are not face to face and when they are, even if they're not anonymous, if they are sort of, they, they don't have to, to be in the same space with each other and understand each other. People tend to be a lot more polite and more reserved and understanding face to face and online, that's all erased. And I've seen like, uh, you know, hours and, 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 and monstrous efforts of good work go to waste when I, when I see two people who I both know and love and know are both, you know, smart and nuanced understanding people who get it, and then I see them like uh, hating on each other openly online, and I'm like, how is that happening? Because I know if they met in real life, they would probably get along. Um, but the capacity for misunderstanding is so great. I was wondering if you would talk about the real life versus online gap. And it's funny, the it's funny because like, politics. online, it's kind of like, I know what you are, but what am I argument for hours and hours and hours and hours on Twitter. And, but I've seen these arguments too. When you're in, when you see someone's reaction, when you're talking to someone directly, you're making eye contact. You see the, you hear the tone of voice. You have context. Also, you you can get slapped in person. Yeah. Well, <laughs> obvious violence aside, there's you know there's this level of respect that happens where unless it gets into and, the violence and embarrassment section. to be seen yelling. At them. Yeah, right. and then there's people well, that. On the internet. There's people that, there's things that happen on Twitter where people will butt into conversations halfway through, not really knowing what's happening. There'll be troll fights. You know, never feed the trolls. Keep in mind, there's a lot of people that want a lot of traffic on their blog. And the way they'll do it is they'll write the most inane headline and story that they know will cause outrage in the geek community because then everyone will link to that and say, isn't this guy an idiot? And then that idiot is getting a hell of a lot of traffic and probably ad revenue because you all are complaining about it. So a lot of it is just ignore it, um, which I know is really hard to do. And I've, I've fallen for the troll bait. Like I've done that where I'm like, oh, hell no. It's my army and Felicia Day's army and Veronica Belmont's army and we're gonna take you all down for saying that we're stupid girls. And then I realized, oh god, I just sent a bunch of traffic to this guy's blog. So there's that. And then there's just stuff where if you're not seeing someone face to face, and this happens at work, I'm sure you've all sent an email to a coworker or a boss at work where you're like, oh crap, why did I just send that? I didn't read it all the way through, or a friend or a family member or whatever, and you realize that you're starting this fight because there's no tone, there's no uh, context in the sense that you're gonna have this fight online because it can never end too. I mean, I still have fights with people that bring up something a year ago because they found a tweet and then all of a sudden it's happening again. And it's hard. I mean, the thing is I get my eight classes of water a day by if I see something on Twitter that I really want to respond to, I put my phone down and then go to the kitchen and get a glass of water and drink the glass and then come back. <laughs> by the time I've hydrated, uh, or it doesn't have to be water, it can also be liquor. Uh, yeah, um, I get my eight glasses of vodka a day. Uh, it just has to be liquid, let's just say that. Uh, it's good to just take a breath, take a beat. You don't have to respond to every attack on your favorite franchise or your friends or your favorite celebrity. You don't have to get in a fight of who you think should be cast into what. You don't have to get in a fight over politics and religion is really fun on Twitter. Uh, you know, you don't have to do this. And the more you bait the situation, you're either feeding the troll, or you're making the situation worse, or you could lose friends over this. I mean, I've seen friends like held grudges over tweets, which is ridiculous, when if they were just talking face to face, it would never happen. So just think of why you're saying what you're saying. Are you saying it because you're thinking of yourself as an activist and a revolutionary, or are you saying it because you think 
Nathan, you know, Fillion would look hot as Han Solo, and how dare you say he would, you know, it's like, no, that could start a revolution too, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, keep in mind what you're saying, and also, I know it's dumb, but would you like that person to say that to you? You know, it's that whole golden rule thing, I know it's silly, but it's like, and would you say that to them if they were standing in front of you? That's another good one, like, if you said to tweet to someone, to a celebrity, you're like, hey, you know, Jerry Ryan, I think your hair is stupid. I don't think anyone would ever say that to Jerry Ryan. But I mean, you know, you never say that to her in her face, so why would you say it on Twitter? Yeah, there's a lot of disconnect, I think, on the internet. It's a lot easier to get mad at a tweet or at a blog post or at a YouTube comment, um, and, and you actually think that you're getting mad at that tweet and yelling at that tweet, you know, as opposed to being a person, that's a human, and you remember that that's a human. And that's something that you might not realize until the third or fourth time you reply, or maybe even never on the internet. You know, you're just, you're getting mad at this text, and you're replying with your text, and it's this big text fight. And it's not, it's not a human that you're talking to in your mind. Also, if people are mean to you on the internet, just remember you're awesome. And if they don't think that, that's their problem. Just respond with all emoji cons. <laughs> <laughs> just don't even use. I mean, there's so many emoji cons to use. There's hand gestures. There's like camels. There's Thomas Selleck. There's like cat pictures. Actually, there's so many cat pictures. Yeah. 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 Over and over. Or just a picture of grumpy cat. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica. Five dollars will be in the mail. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a question uh, for those of us who have um, been in Geekdom for so long that we feel like we've lost our family. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you recommend? I like that this is the question Deadpool's leaving on. <laughs> Bye, Deadpool. Oh, I don't love you anyway. <laughs> no tacos for you. Oh, okay, so oh, for question. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to jump down your suit there. <laughs> You can put your katanas away. Oh my god, no, our whole answers from the last question were just null and void. Because we're totally, like, tweet fighting it. But anyway. And I thought we were equal. I know, sorry. The mask on, we didn't know you were a human. Yeah, I know. We've got five minutes left, so we're going to get through as many as possible. So let's just... Like make your own geek jewelry. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can like bring feminism back. Feminine in the Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, because I don't consider myself feminine because I wear jeans every day and bands, and I'm not like super girly girly. But I wear a lot of makeup because that's just like that's my cosplay. Um, so you know, that's just my. I think everyone's version of what is feminine is different. So find what interests you and like, like you know, Google it, find blogs, find Tumblrs, Pinterest, whatever. Pinterest is great for makeup tips as well. And also just cosplay tips and jewelry and decor and book recommendations and any stuff like that. Just find someone that you really admire and like, you know, stalk them a little and find out what they're into. I'm using that term lightly. Okay, stalk me, just stalk me. Okay, yeah. All right, we have another question. Hi. I was wondering if you're familiar with the Hawkeye Initiative and what you think about it. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's Hawkeye and sexy poses that um, oh, yeah. that poses girls. Then, yeah, I saw I saw a Hawkeye Initiative cosplayer today, and I hugged him. It's <laughs> <laughs> really hard. Hawkeye going around and posing in like different. Yep. Yeah. He honestly, was doing the backbreaker. I honestly cannot say. To tell you the truth, I wish someone would turn that into a yoga routine. <laughs> Because I think, I mean, I should say that because I put my back out, so I, I'm feeling it's going to turn into a lawsuit. But I think those poses could turn into yoga poses. So maybe if we could 
figure out fitness and those crazy poses. They're hilarious, but yeah, yeah I love that. Get your blog post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so I was wondering if you guys could comment on how, you know, early in the comic industry and video game industry, it's very kind of male-centric and how they very market towards males and how we might be able to shift that attention not only to females but also to every gender and every, like, sexuality. And, like, do you have any comment? On With your that? money. Yeah. Buy the stuff that you think is showing women how you really respect and like. That's the main thing. This is a business. All this stuff is business. If you stop buying the stuff that's just showing, you know, those Hawkeye poses and whatever, then they're not going to do well because you are a huge part of the market. Women do buy comics and books and movies and all that stuff, so and gaming. So, you know, definitely do that. Vote with your dollars first. Then obviously, you know, talk about it on your blog, talk about it on Twitter, be vocal. And I think that's, I mean, I know this sounds silly, but it really does make a difference because if their pocketbook hurts, they have to start changing. So we are unfortunately being told that we have to wrap it up and end this panel. Oh, Deadpool's um, pissed. Oh, yeah, so love you, Deadpool. Us individually. Um, or keep using the hashtag, keep tweeting with each other, tweet at us, um, let's continue this conversation. Yeah, let's online. tell our, everybody what our uh, Twitter yeah, handles are yeah. in case people want to just tweet it. questions. Yeah. Uh, I'm at Geeky Hostess. Uh, I'm at Christina Horner. I'm at Molly McIsaac, and that's just Isaac with Mick on the front. It's two A's, not two S's. And I'm at Bonnie Girl, and it's G-R-R-L, not G-I-R-L. So just feel free to tweet me, and I answer pretty much every question, and I never sleep. So <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't. Thank you all for coming.